This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about Satoshi's sneaky supply schedule and what this tells us about Bitcoin. It turns out that 93% of all Bitcoin have already been mined, and you can keep track of this. You just go to Clark Moody's Bitcoin dashboard. Under supply here, we can see that the current money supply of Bitcoin is 19.554 million Bitcoin out of a total of 21 million. If you do the math, that turns out to be 93.11% of all Bitcoin has already been issued or mined. And if you want to take a look at the future supply and when we hit different uh, targets or percentages of the supply, we will hit 95% of the supply having been mined by approximately November 10th, 2025, 99% by November 27th, 2034. Last full Bitcoin issued sometime in October of 2103, and then all coins issued, all Satoshis issued on in uh, approximately May of 2137. So it's basically, it's taken only 14 years to mine the first 93% of the total supply of 21 million coins, and it's going to take another 80 years until the last full Bitcoin is mined, and 114 years from today until the last Satoshi is mined by Bitcoin miners. You don't have to worry about Bitcoin security model after that. Bitcoin miners will be entirely compensated by transaction fleet fees for every transaction that they include in a block. But what we're talking about here is sort of the free Bitcoin. It's called the block subsidy that Bitcoin miners still get for every block that they win. So basically, it's another 114 years to mine the last 7% of the Bitcoin supply of 21 million as compared with just 14 years to mine the first 93% of the supply. So we can see that the supply is heavily front loaded. If we want to take a look at new Bitcoin issuance by day, we can see back in the early 2010s how many Bitcoin were issued per day. And it's obviously been dropping after each halving. Another way of looking at it is the percentage of total 21 million supply mined, this glass node chart, which I will link to. And you can see how it's fairly sharp and steep at the beginning, and then it really levels out. So it turns out that Bitcoin supply issuance the percentage that's been mined is highly front-loaded. Most coins were issued in the early years due to the Bitcoin miner block subsidy starting at 50 Bitcoin. And then after the first four years, it got halved to 25 Bitcoin. It got halved again to 12.5. And now it's currently at 6.25 and it'll be halved again in April or May of 2024. So Bitcoin supply issuance is highly front loaded by design. Now, why does this matter? It matters because these were the years, these early years were the years before Bitcoin was widely recognized and highly valued. It was really a niche product. And early adopters got into Bitcoin because of their ideologies, not because they wanted to get filthy rich, but they ended up getting both. Now, what types of people were interested in early Bitcoin? There were obviously the cypherpunks, which was Satoshi's group that he was hanging out with, the mailing list, anti-status, libertarians, anarcho-capitalists. These are all similar names for similar things. Tech hobbyists, computer hobbyists, independent thinkers, psychonauts, the people who wanted to buy drugs and especially psychedelics, on the Silk Road. These were the early adopters in Bitcoin. If we compare this to VC issued coins like Solana, where it was basically issued to large venture capital funds, and then the venture capitalists laughed about dumping these coins on retail, as I documented two years ago in this video on Solana. See the difference. VC coins like Solana were issued to already really rich people like venture capitalists, VCs, who then dumped them on na naive retail noob investors sounds like the basis for a new more fair global financial system doesn't it absolutely not the thing about bitcoin is it was able to grow under the radar bitcoin's founder was able to completely disappear from the project this is what we call the immaculate conception he was able to completely disappear from the project in the early days before widespread global surveillance before every single person had a smartphone and a camera in their pockets. The majority of Bitcoin is still being held, I believe, by fairly ideologically minded people who don't especially like oppressive financial regulatory regimes and totalitarian governments. These early Bitcoiners and Bitcoin OGs are quite tech savvy and know how to use Bitcoin in a purely sovereign P2P manner. They're not the type who leave their coins on Coinbase or any other exchange. And these Bitcoiners, these OG Bitcoiners, will continue to want nice freedom tech, free and open source software, nice houses, ranches, farms, 
nice steak, nice wine, nice cars, nice tools of self-defense, nice weddings for their children, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to onboard a lot of rich customers, all you need to do is to just start accepting Bitcoin as a merchant. It's that easy. In other words, the Bitcoin P2P circular economy is already here. We have these OG hodlers who every cycle decide to spend some of their coins. And it makes sense. It may not make sense for you and I who uh, started accumulating in 2019 as I did or 2020 or 2021 or even 2023. But if you've been holding since Bitcoin was a dollar or five dollars, there's certainly nothing wrong with peeling some off and making a nice wedding for your children or buying a nice farm or ranch or something like this. And again, Bitcoin is freedom money, so you're free to do with it whatever you want. So the Bitcoin P2P circular economy is already here. And I think we should try to keep it that way. Don't ever sell your Bitcoin to BlackRock. Try to keep your Bitcoin outside of the traditional fiat system. Let's try to take full advantage of Satoshi's sneaky supply schedule and the fact that we are all, if you're listening to this and you own some Bitcoin, we're all early adopters. Even if you bought your first Bitcoin in 2023, if you're still holding it on an exchange, be sure to withdraw your Bitcoin from the exchange, not your keys, not your coins, and hold it on a hardware wallet like a Blockstream Jade or a cold card. And I'll be making an updated video about this in the near future. Also learn how to use Bitcoin in a self-sovereign manner, which we'll be talking more about in the coming days and weeks. And definitely don't waste your time with Bitcoin ETFs and other Bitcoin IOUs. It's very important to learn how to use Bitcoin itself as the pristine digital asset that it is. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.